Hi everyone, my name's Lorraine and I am an English teacher based in Scotland in the UK. And today I want to talk to you about the IELTS academic exam and specifically we'll be looking at writing task two. So if you haven't seen already, we've got lots of lovely videos on um, the Facebook page and I've covered other IELTS skills in the previous videos. Um, one second. So one thing I would recommend is going back to the previous videos and double checking the other information that I've given you. So a lot of these uh, videos have been focusing on IELTS skills specifically for people who want to um, travel to the UK to come to university here. The other videos cover writing and speaking, and I focused on each individual part of the exams um, so that we could really look at the details of each of them. So in the speaking videos, I've showed you the different marking criteria for speaking part one, then in another video part two, and in another video part three. And we've looked at different kinds of language you can use for the speaking part of the IELTS exam. In other videos, I've showed you writing task one, specifically the academic writing tasks, and also looked at language as well. So today we'll be looking at writing task two. Now, I'd just like to say, if you're watching this live, please ask me any questions, just share them in the comments section, and I'll look back at them as much as I can. And if you are unsure about anything that I've said today, you know, please feel free to write in the Facebook page uh, if you're watching this later on. Uh, we're always happy to, to hear any questions and comments from the audience. So please feel free to share. And if you would like to join the live event today, actually come on board and ask me a question live, um, just request that and um, I'll, I'll try and see what I can do. This is the first time I've done this one on my own, so I'll see what I can do. So let's take a look at the, um, the slides that I've got prepared for you today. So the IELTS academic writing test takes a total of 60 minutes. So you've got writing task one, which is 20 minutes, and writing task two, which is 40, but you can manage your own time. In task in task two, you'll be asked to write an essay in response to a problem or argument. And you'll be asked to present and justify an opinion. Often you'll be asked to compare and contrast evidence, opinions and implications and evaluate and challenge ideas, evidence or arguments. The marking criteria, which we'll look at in greater detail in just a second, are equally weighted. That means all four of the mark marking uh, categories are as important as each other. So don't spend uh, a lot of time focusing on your vocabulary only to ignore your grammar range and accuracy. OK, they're all as important as each other. So make sure that you focus on all four areas equally. So what are these four areas? We've got task response, coherence and cohesion, vocabulary and grammar range and accuracy. So. If you've seen our previous videos about the speaking marking criteria, you'll notice that some of these are the same, but not all of them. So let's take a look at the difference between writing and um, you can always check the speaking video later. So for many of you who are traveling to the UK to go to university, you will be looking at achieving a band seven, 7.5, um, hopefully eight if you can. So here I'm looking at the marking criteria for band seven. This is the minimum you need to get. 
the minimum. So you need to address all parts of the task, present a clear position throughout the response, and that you, the candidate, presents, um, extends and supports main ideas um, as clearly as possible. Now, because it's a band seven, not band eight or nine, it's okay if you overgeneralize over a little bit, okay? It, but try not to do that as much as possible. Now, overgeneralizing, that means when you say all men or all women or people from this country or people with this religion, that's really not accurate in many cases, right? In most cases. And if you remember the, the overall meaning the overall uh, idea for the IELTS exam, they the IELTS exam is designed to make sure that you can contribute respectfully and clearly in an English speaking country to conversation. So overgeneralizing is generally quite a, a lazy, a lazy technique in conversation. Um, if you think about it this way, when was the last time you had everything in common with one other person? It's just not it's just not common at all, is it? Um, you know, even if you have a lot in common with someone, it's still not everything. You don't think exactly the same. So if that's true of one other person, then it certainly can't be true of all people of your gender or all people of your nationality or all people who speak your language. So overgeneralizations should be avoided as much as possible. And we'll focus on that again in another video later. OK, your supporting ideas may lack a little bit of focus. It's OK if that happens. Obviously, it's best if you are clear and uh, precise as much as possible. But if from time to time you make an overgeneralization or you're lacking a tiny bit of focus, that's that's not the end of the world. That will get you a band seven but we're trying to get 7.5 or eight if possible. You know, if, if you can get a nine, that's even better. Coherence and cohesion. What does that mean? So for a band seven, that means that you can logically organize your information and ideas, and that there is progression throughout. And um, we will look at how to structure your um, ideal answer in just a moment. OK, coherence and cohesion also means that you can use a range of cohesive devices appropriately, although there may be some under or over use. Well, I'm going to show you some cohesive and linking devices today. So using them correctly is really going to help you boost your score. OK, um, also for band seven, you need to present a general topic with each paragraph. Each paragraph should have its own theme. Try not to fit in too much. Remember, you've got 250 words here for this task. So there is a lot of scope, a lot more than in the previous task, task one. Um, but try not to fit in too much information. If you stick to one theme per paragraph, that's going to be great. The next marking criteria for band seven, these points must be um, satisfied. Lexical resource using sufficient range of vocabulary to allow some flexibility and precision. OK, try not to rely on the same phrases again and again and again. We want a variety of different phrases. OK, and at band seven, it's possible to to use some really nice advanced vocabulary to boost your score. OK. From time to time, try to use less common words. OK, so rather than very or really, you know, we're not looking. That's that's not great. That's not going to impress the examiner. OK, so looking at extremely or significantly, you know, that kind of adverb instead, that's less common, slightly more advanced and will really impress the uh, examiner more than using very or really. OK, remember to keep an eye on your style and collocations. So. You are using formal language in the academic writing tasks. So you need to make sure that your style is formal. OK, you may produce some occasional errors. OK, it's not the end of the world, but obviously try to avoid them if possible. 
Okay. So spelling and word formation. These are areas that often get forgotten. Many students who are preparing for the IELTS exam forget to check their spelling or forget to work on word formation. So for those of you who are not familiar with word formation, this is the, the way that in, in English, our words often have one stem word and then we can add prefixes to the beginning of the word or suffixes to the end of the word which can change the word form. Okay, so understanding that, doing lots of exercises there can really, really help you. Okay, so we'll have a look at the word formation skills for the IELTS exam in a later video. Now, the last marking criteria category that I want to look at today um, is grammatical range and accuracy. So you need to use a variety of complex structures. Again, I'll show you that today. Most sentences are error free, but remember this is for band seven. So if you want to aim for a band eight or nine, you need to have zero errors. OK, so in all of your sentences, make only occasional errors. OK, it's OK at a band seven if you make a little error. It's not going to completely ruin your chances of, of getting a band seven, but avoid it if possible. OK, you can check all of these uh, criteria on official IELTS websites. And remember, all four of the criteria I've mentioned today are equally weighted. So they're all as important as each other. So now let's focus on creating a nice task to answer. Here are my suggestions for approaching task two. Read the question carefully. It seems like common sense, but a lot of people forget to read the question carefully. I'm just going to make this, this slide bigger now. Unfortunately, people in an exam, the adrenaline makes you feel like you need to rush. You know, you've got a short space of time to complete this. But if you don't read the question carefully, you might answer not what they're asking for. You're answering the question you want to answer. But that's not going to win you any points, is it? So read the question and then answer that question. Address all parts of the task. In writing task two, you sometimes have two different things to answer. Well, that's clear. You can separate those paragraphs easily. But sometimes you have one big question to answer and you need to separate the points. You need to decide which point is going in paragraph one and which point is going in paragraph two. OK. Now, don't get sidetracked with one part of the task and forget to answer all of it. OK, you need to answer both parts or all parts of the answer question. And in paragraph one, present one view. In paragraph two, present the other view and then present your opinion. OK, if it's asking for your opinion, you need to give your opinion and justify that opinion. Say why you think that way. I'm just checking to see if we've got any questions on the live stream. Feel free to post any questions uh, in the comment section. OK, now let's have a look at a model question here, a model question and answer. You should spend 40 minutes on this task, but you get to organise your time um, yourself. So really try to get as much practice with Official materials as possible. Good quality IELTS preparation materials really will help you. OK, practice as many times as you can. Okay? Many people think that, you know, it's OK to just practice your general writing skills. You know, it's good to practice general writing, spelling, grammar, punctuation, things like that. But please, please, please practice with the structure that you will see in the exam. It will help you feel more confident on the day and it will also help you to rather than focusing so much on the instructions that you get when you when you go into the exam room, you know what to expect. You know how to divide your time. You know how to structure your answers then. So you can focus on answering the question rather than following the instructions. OK, so here it's asking. Write about the following topic. I've got this from the um, official IELTS website. 
right about the following topic. The first car appeared on British roads in 1888. By the year 2000, there may be as many as 29 million vehicles on British roads. Alternative forms of transport should be encouraged and international laws introduced to control car ownership and use. To what extent do you agree or disagree? Give reasons for your answer and include any relevant examples from your knowledge or experience. Write at least 250 words. If you're writing 200 words, you won't have um, addressed all parts of this question. If you're writing 300 words, there's probably going to be much too much and you will not have time to check your answer as well at the end. So 250 words. If you've practiced enough times, you will know how much 250 words looks like. OK, so you will know how many lines you need in power in the introduction, in paragraph one, paragraph two and in the conclusion. So that's why practice is so important. As you can see here, this official question has obviously been written a long time ago here before the year 2000. OK, so it's a very long time ago um, because it's talking about it by the year 2000. There may be as many as. So it's looking at the um, the year 2000 in the future. OK, so this is just a standard question here. Obviously, now the timing is is different, but the structure and the things I'll teach you today will be the same. We'll need some linking devices. So one of the marking criteria, remember, is cohesion and coherence. So we're going to look at these linking phrases to help make your answer nice and coherent. OK, here are some linking phrases. For example, on one hand. Or on the one hand. Whereas. On the other hand. Because. Firstly, similarly, another, despite, consequently, although, in conclusion, regardless, in addition, finally, however, nevertheless, as a result, Therefore, undoubtedly, moreover. Here you can see a combination of different linking words for different functions. Sometimes you're connecting two similar ideas. Sometimes you're talking about contrasting ideas. Sometimes you're talking about how you feel about something like undoubtedly. Um, you know, they, there are lots of linking phrases for different functions and we'll do a different video which will look entirely at the different linking phrases you can use in the writing exams. But for today, here are some linking phrases that I'd like to focus on when we're looking at our model answer. So we'll start with the introduction here. Okay. We just go back to the question quickly. Remember, write about the following topic. We've talked about the British cars on the roads. Um, and then it says. Alternative forms of transport should be encouraged and international laws introduced to control car ownership and use. To what extent do you agree or disagree? And to give reasons. Introduction. Cars have become ubiquitous over the last century around the world. It is the preferred mode of transport for families. An unintended benefit of increasing car usage in, is pollution and a negative impact on the environment. While the convenience of traveling by car is clear, I strongly agree that there should be alternative forms of transport and policies to control car ownership and use. In this essay, I will present reasons to support this opinion. Okay. We've got some advanced vocabulary here, ubiquitous. We've got some linking words, while. You've got an answer, the beginning of your answer, I strongly agree. And uh, a linking phrase there to say, read this essay as I will support my opinions. OK. I can see a comment from Sanjida here. This session is really helpful. 
hopefully it will improve our skills in writing task two. Thank you so much, Lorraine. Oh, you're welcome, Sanjida, and thank you for being here today. Okay, moving on to paragraph one. The modern motor car has undoubtedly changed society, making it possible to travel greater distances in a short period of time. Compared to public transport, which often stops multiple times before reaching their destination, cars allow the passengers much more control over their journey and are much more reliable. Furthermore, advances in technology add to the general comfort of driving in a car, especially when traveling with small children. There we've got some more linking phrases in bold here. Now, there are some complex grammar structures here as well. So remember, when you say compared to, you need to explain what you're comparing. So compared to public transport, which often stop multiple times before reaching their destination, that's an independent clause here. We could remove that clause and the sentence will still make sense. Compared to public transport, cars allow the passengers much more control. OK, if you've given yourself time to read through this, you will be able to check that your sentences are complete. If you haven't given yourself time to check it at the end, you you might miss se sentence fragments. For example, you might um, have a missing clause somewhere or you might have started with compared to, but then not compared it with anything. So it's really important to double check before you submit. OK, we've got some slightly more advanced um, vocabulary here. So, um, you know, rather than just people, we're showing that they are passengers in a car. OK, and also in advances in technology. OK, so you've got here some slightly less common words. Um, and that will help fulfill the um, marking criteria for lexical resource. Here's paragraph two. However, the significant increase in the number of cars has had a detrimental effect on the environment with air pollution at record levels in many countries. In cities, traffic can cause noise pollution and road traffic accidents are a leading cause of death in urban and suburban areas alike. Moreover, it can actually be less convenient to drive if you live in a city due to traffic and congestion charges. OK. Lexical resource, significant increase, slightly more advanced. Even better, detrimental effect. That's a nice word, isn't it? Detrimental. OK, it means negative. But we've used negative in the previous paragraph, so try to use a range of different vocabulary. We've described air pollution here and further down, we're talking about noise pollution. So we're using the same noun, but we're changing the adjective form here to show what kind of pollution we're talking about. Urban and suburban areas alike. So here we've got some nice word formation, haven't we? Urban means the city centre or built up areas, busy areas where there are lots of buildings and, and cars in this case. Suburban is the next level out in a city plan. So suburban, the sub means we use that prefix to talk about something which is slightly under. So um, it's not quite as built up as an urban area, but it's it's suburban. It's halfway um, to rural. A rural area is where there are there's lots of space and uh, farms and land and things like that and less traffic. OK, moreover shows that I am continuing along the same theme as the rest of the paragraph. OK. Now, one little tip I'll give you about these paragraphs is because you're supposed to be focusing on one theme for paragraph one and another theme for paragraph two. Here's a little tip for you. However, and other um, linking words which describe a contrast, that should be at the beginning of your paragraph because you're contrasting with the theme from the previous paragraph. Right. And phrases like moreover, that should be in the body of your paragraph, in the middle of your paragraph to show that everything is still you're still focusing on one theme or one argument there. OK, so if you've got however and nevertheless, and on the other hand, 
within your paragraph, make sure that you are still talking in the same theme as your the rest of the paragraph here. If you've got any questions about the vocabulary, please let me know. Please ask. Um, I'm checking the comments from time to time. Thank you for everyone who's watching at the moment and for everyone who watches later, of course, as well. So finally, the conclusion. In conclusion, it is my belief that the disadvantages of owning a car far outweigh the advantages more should be done to improve the reliability of public transport to encourage more people to use it. A decrease in car usage would mean better air quality, fewer road accident related deaths and quieter, cleaner cities. Okay, that answer was 266 words, so that's the perfect length. And I'm just going to put the whole answer on the page here. So if you'd like to take a screenshot of that to focus on that, um, a little bit later and um, analyze that uh, more so, then that's absolutely fine. I really recommend taking a look at model answers. I would say this answer is maybe even um, an eight, but there were a couple of small errors here and there um, to do with grammar. So, um, you know, it might not reach a band of eight, but maybe 7.5 um, because uh, a couple of errors are, are acceptable. Um, so, yeah, take a look at that. That's a that's a great answer. We've got a range of different points that cover all of the marking criteria. OK. One thing I would say when you're looking at model answers is stay curious. Right. Don't just read it. Focus on it. Think to yourself, oh, that's an interesting word. I'm going to write that down. Or that's an interesting phrase. I'm going to write that down and in focus on the preposition usage or the punctuation that's been used there. OK. Look at the words that have been used here because they could be useful to you when you're writing your writing task, too. OK. And always, always, always try to leave a little bit of time at the end of your writing task to check what your what your general theme is. So when you're writing, when sorry, when you're reading a model answer like this, imagine it's your answer and you are just double checking it for the last time. You're checking it, making sure that you've got any uh, little mistakes there so that you can correct it before you submit it. Right. Focusing on the general meaning as well as the individual details. All right. If you've got any questions, now's the time to ask. Um, we will be checking and answering the questions later on. So if you're watching this in a recording, please let me know if you've got any questions. OK, so that's all from us today. Uh, if you have any uh, extra comments or requests for different parts of the IELTS exam that you particularly struggle with, if you have any requests for um, vocabulary, pronunciation, punctuation, um, then please let me know. And yeah, stay tuned for other helpful IELTS exam um, tips and um, advice. And we'll be back again next week. Sanjida will be joining me again next week for some more IELTS academic um, reading next time. We'll be focusing on the reading part of the exam. Okay. Have a lovely weekend, everybody. And for everyone in Bangladesh, I wish you a very happy in National Father's Birthday public holiday today. <laughs> and I'll see you again next week. Thanks.